Welcome. So let's take a look at an example of using these Galilean transformations of electric fields. So we have the same situation which we have a proton and a neutron and a point P that we are interested in, a proton, a neutron, and a point P that we are interested in, and we have just have it in two different frames. So in the proton's frame A, the proton is not moving, and thus the neutron looks like it's moving with the speed V this way. In frame B, the neutron is not moving, and so the proton looks like it's moving in the opposite direction with the same speed V to give it a similar size vector. So we can calculate electric and magnetic fields here. We only have to worry about the field from the proton because the neutron has no charge. The neutron essentially is just an observer to kind of help us understand the frames. So here from the proton we have an electric field in frame A from the proton. So we can calculate the electric field from A is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the charge of our proton over the distance squared in the r hat direction. And then our magnetic field in A is going to be mu naught over 4 pi, the charge of our proton, the velocity of our proton in the reference frame A crossed with this r vector, r hat, over r squared, but our proton's velocity in this reference frame is zero. So this entire BA is zero because right, PA is equal to zero. So we just have the electric field from A, and that's all we need to worry about, right? So we have the BA. zero in this case. So let's look at it from the neutrons frame over here. If we look at it, we can take a look at the electric field from this, the electric field caused by the frame B. The electric field in frame B is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught plus over r squared r hat, which is good because this is equal to the electric field from A plus velocity of frame B in reference to frame A crossed with the magnetic field from A. Well, we know the magnetic field from A is zero, so this is zero because, right, A is equal to zero. So we've confirmed our electric field from two different calculations. We can either use the transformation or we can use just a normal thing. And then we can calculate the magnetic field in a similar way as we did here. Mu naught over 4 pi, charge of the positive charge, and now the velocity of the charge in frame B crossed with r hat over r squared. So now this is not zero because right our charge in frame B is equal to negative the charge of the neutron in frame A. So we can kind of say it's also equal to negative the r hat. So we can arrange this just a little bit differently. I can have my mu naught here. I can then have my V plus B and cross it with everything else left over. I have my R hat here. I'm dividing by 4 pi R squared, and then I just have my P plus here. Looking at this, this is looking very, very similar to this right here. All I've got missing is this epsilon naught on the bottom. So what I can do is I can multiply both sides by epsilon naught divided by epsilon naught. If I do this, my magnetic field in B is mu naught times epsilon naught. And instead of writing B plus B, I can write negative VBA.
crossed with, and now I have this epsilon not down here, so I have Q plus over four pi epsilon not r squared, r hat. Well, what does this look like? This looks like all the way over here. So, my magnetic field in B U naught epsilon naught negative VBA crossed with E sub A. And since my BA is zero, I can always add zero to this. So I can get my Galilean transformation is the E sub B is equal to E sub A plus VBA crossed with VBA and my B sub B is equal to B sub A minus U naught epsilon naught VBA crossed with So these are my Galilean transformations. Now, this is the absolute limit, why it's one of the last videos we have in this lecture, of what we can do with our current understanding of physics without any special relativity, without having to do any things like that. One thing that we'll tell you is you can only use one of these transformations. They're both built upon a lot of assumptions that we've used to get here. And as such, if we try to use both of them, it will break things down, very unfortunately. We'll show that in a problem in another video this week. We can only use one of these two transformations, and that's that.